Welcome back to the CNET Live stage at CES 2020. It is press day. I'm Scott Stein, and with me is our laptop guru, Dan Ackerman, who's going to give us a look at the future of computing. That is right, Scott, and I'm here with Justin Lyles. Uh, he's the VP of Advanced Design at Dell Technologies, and he has brought not only some of Dell's new laptops from CES 2020, but some fantastic concept pieces that we are seeing here for the very first time ever, and we are going to take a look at some new stuff that is really defining the future of computing. So I'm going to give everybody just a little tease of the different products we're going to look at uh, so they know what to expect, and then we'll come back and do some show-offs and some demos and talk about them some more. So this guy right here is the Duet, is that right? That's correct. And this is a dual screen Windows laptop. So screen on top, screen on the bottom. Next to it is the, con is the Ori. Concept Ori. Concept Ori, and it is a folding screen Windows laptop. And then next to it is something that really blew my mind. It's called Concept UFO from Alienware. Correct. And it's basically a Windows gaming PC, but kind of also looks like a handheld game console. And it does a lot of cool stuff with the uh, components coming together mm -hmm. and, and taking them off and putting them back on. And next to that, out of the concept phase into the real world phase is the latest Dell Latitude, and that is the 90... 9510. The 9510. That's right. It's 5G, uh, super long battery life. Yep. Qualcomm or Intel? Qualcomm. Qualcomm. And then at the far end, the latest version of the XPS 13, one of my favorite laptops that uh, for this year is bumping up the screen size a little bit, getting a little bit smaller, and just kind of refining, mm -hmm. I think, one of the ones we call out every year as being awesome. Absolutely. Uh, but I think everyone is very excited to see these concept pieces. Uh, so why don't we start, you know what? Let's get to the fun part first. Show me a little bit of this concept UFO. I really want to hear more about this. Absolutely. Very exciting. Alienware is focused on the most immersive PC gaming experience, bar none. We asked ourselves a question. How do you make that mobile gaming experience even more mobile? The ultimate approach to that is a handheld gaming experience. Now, handheld is very unique. It's very intimate. When you put something in your hands, it's got to feel just right. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to handhold it. Please, please. Look at that. Okay. And what you see here is, again, I want to emphasize, this is a full PC experience. This is not just a con mobile console. This has a full PC effect. You can actually see it's a PC desktop in here. Mm -hmm. Going into this, we have a launcher of all the games. So your full AAA PC titles from all your gaming titles are here, as well as on your desktop PC. Going into these, jump right into a game here. And it kind of looks a little bit like, I mean, obviously it looks like a Nintendo Switch, but it also reminds me, Scott, do you remember a couple years ago? Of the Razer Edge. Yeah, the yeah. Razer yeah. Edge, the gaming which was tablet. kind of too early switch. for its time. Here, let me see if that does something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go nuts here. Sure. And use the trigger, which I assume is the gas. There yep. it goes. Yep. Oh, this is how I drive in real life, being a New Yorker. <laughs> nice. So this is, this is F1 2019. Again, okay. this is a full yep. PC AAA gaming title. Uh, high performance product. Mm -hmm. The challenge here is actually getting this full performance for gaming into a handheld size. Right. It's really took a lot of technology, a lot of innovation that we brought to this. Really, really focused on the absolute best immersive gaming experience for the user for a mobile experience. But it's also the physical design. It's how it has a kickstand in the back that comes out. I don't want to miss messing up. How do you do the kickstand? No, no, absolutely. You just pull this down. There you go. Okay. Uh, again, so you can sit on the table, hands-free gaming. Uh, let me show you something very yeah, special but here. But you know what I love about the Switch? You can take the side controllers off. Yes, and exactly. Hold oh, look at that. Look at that. So I'm going to set this down for a second. I'm going to pull these off. And you put the side controllers onto a little uh, yes, middle piece. Yes, it's a little bridge middle piece. It's actually got a built-in battery to it. It's got a little battery it. in it. Okay. And then you have you can see this activate. Like, Everything cool. comes together. Yeah. So you actually play from a, from a distance. You can set this back. More comfortable, more, more relaxed state. But again, on the go, these can attach to the main unit. You can actually use it on the train, taxi, mm -hmm. on the go. It's a really great experience. This is a concept today. It's an exploration of how mobile can we make gaming. A great, immersive, Alienware-worthy gaming experience. We're really close with this. We're excited all the technology we brought to this. This is not ready for shipping as is. Mm -hmm. okay. We're looking in the future of where we go next. This is really, really important for us. So Some I, really yeah, interesting stuff. I've seen stuff. a lot of concepts, and a lot of them look a little rough around the edges. This feels very polished, like it's something that's almost ready yeah, to I be your first sale product. An actual product. I assume that this, lo this looks like yep. pretty much almost yep. ready to go. It's more polished than a lot of actual products, I think, that we yeah. see at, at CES. So Dell has a long history of doing concept work. What's really special about what we're showing you today is this is the first time we've actually shown it publicly. We're giving you a, a glimpse behind the curtains, if you will. This is work that we do. We bring it to a very high fidelity. This is a learning vehicle for us. This is actually what we do to teach ourselves things. 
How do you actually put this much power in such a small size? How do you actually achieve the ergonomics necessary for such an immersive, amazing gaming experience? A lot of the concepts you see here is actually how we do our innovation, our R&D behind the scenes, and actually learn things. Most importantly, though, is actually the best value for the customer experience. We really want to make sure we can deliver something amazing for the customer. That's why these are concepts today. When they are ready, both hardware, software, when the experience is intuitive enough and intelligent enough, we will put this in the hands of our customers. Today, we're not announcing these as products, but yes, the fact that it's such a it's high fidelity so far working, the process. absolutely. Okay. We, this is how we do things. Because PC gaming is a constant arms race. Absolutely. Uh, to absolutely. have the newest, the best, and coolest stuff. And some people get bigger, and sometimes you have to get smaller. Okay. Um, away from gaming, and really one of the hot topics here this year is folding and flexible screens and how you can reimagine what a clamshell laptop looks like. And that's why I was super excited about this Ori. Um, so how does this, how does building a, how big is the screen on this? 13.4. So it's like a 13 inch laptop yes. screen and you fold it in half, it becomes kind of like a mini clamshell. About an eight inch tablet. And you're okay. Through. And then when you open up all the way, then you can put a little keyboard in front of it and make it like Good. a little all-in-one kind of thing. That's right. Um, how does designing something like this different than making like a folding phone? So Dell doesn't do phones, so that's not a good comparison for us, but I will say... What if you learn from the mistakes other people have made making folding <laughs> products? <laughs> well, that's another reason why this is a concept. We are not announcing a shipping product today. Part of the learning aspect of this is deciding not only the screen size that's appropriate, the, the, how big, how small it needs to be, but also the durability of the screen. How can you fold it thousands and thousands of times without having any damage in the middle? Really, really important, as we learned recently yes. from some of the phones. Also, the infrastructure, all the rest of the, uh, the architecture behind the screen. How do you actually build a hinge that can do this reliably, repetitively? How do you build the actual hardware into this to actually make this product that can fold in half? Mm -hmm. All those learnings are really, really key, and we don't do that in the hands of our customers, we do that internally through concept vehicles like this. Once we feel it's right, it's durable, it's the right experience, we'll put this in the hands of our customers. Now, what's the toughest thing to protect about the screen? Is it the, is, is it the edges? Is it, the, here, I'm gonna do a little fold right here. And sure. you can see it's an actual flexible screen. Uh, there's really no crease in it when you open it up all the way. And um, what's, is, it, is it the sides you have to keep safe? Is it the front? Is it the back? What's, what's the toughest part? Actually, I would say the folding method in the middle of the, of the screen. The fact that actually you have these multi layers of polymer screen that actually has to fold repeatedly thousands and thousands of time, making sure we can do that reliably and you don't delaminate or lose pixels or get any errors in the middle, it's really, really important. Uh, so all the durability testing we do here is really focused on everything you mentioned, but the gap of the screen, that's really the, the bend point. That's the real challenge around how you do foldable products. It's almost like taking a 13-inch laptop with you. This is about the size of a 13-inch laptop screen, yeah. and you just go like this, and you have a mini thing, or you go like this, I'm going to risk closing it, and hopefully it doesn't shut itself off. And then you have a much more portable device. You can take a smaller bag with you, and I, and I really just think... I feel it's like interesting. It's a return of the netbook, and, and in a good way. I feel like this is like the thing, that, the that, size that, that I like before. That bumps up and becomes like a tablet. Yeah, and then you get a convertible. I'm more curious about the software challenges with this too. Like, at what point are you waiting for the software to catch up with it and find ways to modularly shift to add the keyboard and, and connect all those parts? That's a good question because Windows 10 uh, doesn't really understand folding screens and dividing a folding screen sure. into two sure. parts yet. So do you guys do something custom to you know say, oh, it's in folded mode? To create the concept here that we can go test in high fidelity to make sure we have everything right, we do some custom things. Ultimately, well, the software and the hardware will catch up together, and we'll be once that nexus happens with the hardware and the software at the right place, that's when we're ready to launch a product like this. Right. Uh, but yes, to actually create the high fidelity units to go test this, to show to customers, to show publicly, there is some secret sauce we have in here that we do ourselves. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, we'll make sure that we have the right software load from an OS standpoint in here to do what we need it to do. So it's like that work you're doing now so you can get there when everything is all finally together. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, it's learning. We want to learn these things before actually these pieces are ready. We're helping to guide our suppliers along these paths as well. We learn a lot and we feed those back to our supply base to help them guide down this path to achieve the right things that we need ultimately. And you feel like flexible screens are going to be something that's here to stay in the Windows PC space. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I have a long history in the mobile PC space and the mobile phone space prior. Always in history, we've always had a product size is defined by the screen size from a diagonal standpoint. We all know this. It's historical. This is the first time in history we've actually 
the actual diagonal size of a product is separate from the actual diagonal size of the display. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting pivotal moment. Like you say, this is a eight inch basically product size that you can put in a bag or something like this. But you open it up and you have a full 13 inch size screen. That's pretty amazing. When you disconnect the actual product size from the screen size, some magical things really happen there. Learning what all that means and what that means for the future, amazing things are gonna happen. Now, I don't know what's in this, but is this something that would run on like a mobile Qualcomm style platform or on a regular Intel platform? To be decided, to okay. be decided. Uh, and would we you consider this to be an always connected style device in its optimal form? Ideally, yes. You know, some of the PC trends coming with things are always connected. Connectivity mm -hmm. is such an important thing. We're always looking to put the most connectivity we can put in our devices. Uh, yes. Do you well, feel like people... Yeah, go ahead, Scott. Yeah, I was going to say, you mentioned that Dell doesn't make phones, and, and Microsoft's not calling it smaller fold foldable a phone. But yet, it seems like an always connected thing, and even if you make a slightly smaller size... There's an overlap here where, you know, Absolutely. what is a phone, what is a laptop, what's anything, you could be in that space. So could what's, be. The, what, what's the year when people will really be able to go out and buy foldable PCs? Not just from you, for, is it 2020, 2021, 2022? What, what level of preparedness are we at overall? We're getting really close. Okay. By the end of 2020, I think you'll be able to buy foldable PCs. Mm -hmm. I think initially they'll be in you know, small supply, they'll be very high priced, obviously. As the industry catches up and larger foldable screen sizes become more mass market, the price will naturally come down. These will become more attainable to more mass market. I think it'll gradually get bigger, bigger, bigger uh, from a market standpoint. Now, the other thing, the other concept besides the foldable screen is the dual screen. And I've seen people try those different ways over the years. Screen here and a screen here, a screen here, a keyboard and a little tiny screen on the side, a screen here and a screen on the mm -hmm. back. Um, what, what brought you in the duet to two full screens like this? And how are you getting past some of the obstacles that some of the earlier versions of this type of design from other companies haven't quite been ready yet? Sure. They were too early. Why is this the right time for the duet? And what does it do that, that shows us that? So again, I'll bring the conversation back to this is a concept only. This is really important for us because, again, we know that multi-screens are going to become a thing in the future. We're seeing products, as you say, today. We are learning. We're teaching ourselves exactly what's the right experience for the customer. We could do a 1.5 screen. We could do a 1.2 screen. This is actually a 2.0 screen. It's two full-size screens side by side together to look at the maximum screen you can get in a certain size product. Now, again, we're, we're teaching ourselves. We're learning things here about this. Mm -hmm. I'll pull up a couple of demos on the screen yeah, as we go yeah. through this. And I will say, as we go through this and we, and we learn about what this means to have this much produ productive real estate, this much to look at, you know, you can, you can do stuff down at the bottom, stuff at the top, you can multitask on this. The fact that we went to two full-size screens is we know that, um, let me just say this, Dell has been on a journey for years now. XPS is the best example. We call it a celebration of the screen. The screen is the hero component of a product. It's the center of the experience. It's what you actually look at. It's how you manipulate your data in all aspects. The fact of growing that screen larger and larger to get the highest screen to body ratio is really important. By putting in two screens, you actually turn that whole paradigm almost on its head. Almost nobody, all screen. Exactly. You're getting really, really high screen to body ratio and having a, almost a C and a do surface. You can actually multitask here. You can view something passively. You can actively do something down here. Bringing this level of multitasking to the, to the user is really, really interesting. And so for us. there's got to be a way to do an on-screen keyboard here that you would type on. And I'm, I, I, I'm pretty good at on-screen typing, but a lot of people don't, don't love it. So there you go. There's a that's little physical keyboard right yes, there that clips on. Is, yeah. is that like magnetic? It is magnetic. Okay. There's some locating magnets to put on there. So you actually you can type while actually either viewing something or you can be transcribing something. Mm -hmm. Again, multitasking, different modes you can do on this product. And now show me why the keyboard is not the same size as the bottom screen. So let me go to one more demo. Mm -hmm. Show you how this comes up here. And where was that hiding? This was actually magnetic on the bottom. Look at that. That's so here. Let's tilt that up a, a little great, bit. Great storage place for the product. Okay, yeah. And then you just pull I it like off. I like the idea that the whole thing is modular, that you could replace your keyboard. and right, that you, you get could a new, more advanced keyboard. Yeah, that yeah, it doesn't have to be bonded in. So it's not coming up in the demo now, but this basically, by it putting it at the top, it, you transcribe down here, you get a touchpad a zone touchpad, down here. Like a, like so actually you can manipulate touchpad. down here. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So and there's actually a couple different modes for the keyboard. Okay, and then if you slide it down here, exactly. you, you get could a put, zone up could here put some stuff up there, some controls. You guys, exactly. And again, we're trying many, many different things here. How big should the keyboard be? Where should the keyboard locate? How does it interact with the rest of the product? These are all really important ways for I us to, to try learn. I'm typing on this for a second, just for, just for kicks. 
Would you also I mean, explore that's like modular types of, of keyboard accessories? I mean, once you can remove the keyboard, you could put other things you on. You could make anything. You could make your up, own. It yeah. Exactly. It opens up a wealth of different opportunities for us. Right. Different accessories to do different things for the product. I just Stands, love that. The things magnet like that. is kind of strong, so yeah. I feel like I won't lose it immediately like I do with any, any accessory that I have. You've got and it. then it just hides down there. That's awesome. So what, what would you say is further along in, in the thought process? Something like this or something like the folding screen? Or are they in the same sort of race to, to be the first to, to kind of be complete in its design process? Well, in the PC space, since we don't have any shipping folding screen products today, but we do have multi-screens, I would say a multi-screen product that is much further along. That would be now, really two full screens, that's a whole new set of challenges we have to go solve for. But the experience this provides and the attainability of just rigid screens, but having multiple, is very easily to do right now in uh, the PC space. Folding screens, the technology to enable that is a bigger challenge for us and the interfaces are needing to catch up for, with us on that. We're getting really close to those right now. So it could kind of be a stepping stone where you make products that sure. are like that as a way of exploring how those will be. I actually think there's room for both of these. Yeah, okay. But yes, you can yeah. actually see the evolution of this. That becomes a very one big screen, screen One screen that it. just wraps through the middle. Right. This will be a stepping stone to that, but when it happens, I think you'll still have multi-screen products at the That's same what time. I mean. Those will be kind of like first to market, and yeah. then these will follow, and they'll... Find. This seems like the tablet replacement or the mm -hmm. tablet evolution. That becomes yes. an actual yeah. productivity yes. tool that all the other tablets that you can want it to be. Use as a laptop. Yeah. I want to make sure we take just a minute sure. and talk about a couple of things that are actually available or will be available very soon. So slide the latitude over here. Uh, when I first saw this, I, I, I'll admit I was a little blah. I was like, okay, another latitude, that's fine. But you know what? Then, then when we looked at the specs and we saw it's 5G, mm -hmm. you promised something like 30 hours of battery life. Um, why do all these interesting new technologies go into something like this first rather than a consumer laptop? Good question. This is actually our ultra premium new 9000 series. Mm -hmm. This is the 9510, the first one of this new series. This ultra premium series is a new place for us to actually bring a lot of the design inspiration from XPS into the latitude space and bring a lot of this really high technology in as well. So this is the world's smallest, lightest, most intelligent 15-inch commercial PC we have today. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then let me see the XPS 13 for a second because we want to wrap up on a real sure. high point. This okay. has always been one of my favorites. And I love that the new one went from a 13, I, I know this, I've memorized this, went from a 13.3-inch screen to a 13.4-inch screen, which is a little bit bigger, but it got a little bit smaller in the process. And uh, you did the same thing that a lot of the TV manufacturers do, which is you increase the screen-to-body ratio. And a tiny little bit makes a huge difference there. I mean, look at that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's Reduce the bottom border. It's now four-sided true, what we call infinity edge display. Really exciting, large display, it's beautiful. Precision CNC aluminum. This is the woven white glass. This is the frost colorway we have here. We also have a black carbon fiber, which is traditional XPS. And previously, like last year or the year before, you guys put the webcam back on top mm -hmm. rip along, but now it's a uh, IR webcam. As well, that's correct. So you can do the facial recognition login. That's great. Absolutely. Fingerprint reader is in the power button on the keyboard. The keyboard now goes edge to edge on the product. We've basically taken the important parts of the product, the display, the keyboard, the touchpad. We've made those bigger than the previous generation try to minimize everything else, basically trying to deliver the absolute best PC computing experience we can. It looks uh, like a 12 inch. It looks, it really I mean, does. yeah, it looks a lot smaller. And this is a product line that's evolved so much over the years. Absolutely. Like every year just gets a little bit better. Uh, I mean, I'm all in on the facial recognition login <laughs> now. I'm too lazy to even type in a password. So there you go. Dell XPS 13, Latitude. 9510. 9510. This is the Ori. Concept, Concept Ori. Concept Ori. This guy Concept was the duet. Concept Duet with the uh, keyboard magnetically on there. And of course, I think the one we're probably all going to be talking about is the Concept UFO, UFO. the gaming handheld PC. Here, Scott, give this that a This is the thing I thought when the Switch came out, that next CES, I thought there were going to be Concept products like this. I'm surprised that it actually took... It's this long, be the right time, but you know? Yeah, it's, 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 it's an idea that I've, I've been waiting for. Because people so. have played with Windows yeah. gaming sure. tablets sure. before, and the hardware wasn't there yet, and the design was not there yet. Well, That's that cool. is awesome. I mean, it yeah. feels like a regular product. It feels like it's ready. Make it ready. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Justin Lyle, for bringing us these fantastic concepts thank and you. showing us the first look at the future of computing. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Um, thanks so much for this. And uh, that was a great chance to look at some amazing cool tech.